Happy Tuesday night, everybody! Welcome to the fifth episode of Piano Star Masterclass. I am your host, Brian Lin, a professional pianist and a piano teacher. Ever since I graduated from Juilliard a few years ago, making piano education accessible to everybody has been one of my main goals. And that's why I created the series, the Piano Star Masterclass. It starts with a 30 minute interview with a professional pianist followed by an hour of live streamed piano lessons taught by that pianist. During the live stream, you can ask us any questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer them. But remember, you can also sign up to be a performer. We have some great classes coming up. Our April classes are all full, so hurry up and sign up before classes in May are gone too. Piano Star is all about giving piano students virtual performing opportunities. So besides the masterclass, we also have the Piano Star Showcase featuring piano performances by young pianists from age 7 to 12. Now the judges, including myself, have finished our review of the video applications. And I've got to say, we've seen some mind-blowing performances from these kids. The showcase will be live streamed on our website on May 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So don't miss out. Now, I'd like to introduce our guest teacher today. He is a Steinway artist and a Fulbright scholar. He is internationally recognized for his artistry as recitalist, orchestral, orchestral soloist, and spiritual recording artist. He's given acclaimed performances in prestigious venues across four continents, including New York's Alice Tolley Hall, Sydney Hall, uh, sorry, Sydney Opera House, Rome's Stadio Olimpico, and the Beijing Concert Hall. As an educator and juror, he has presented lectures throughout the United States, Canada, and Asia, and served on the jury panel of the 2019 Friends List International Competition in China, the 2020 Singapore International, and the 2020 Paris Vivace International Piano Competitions. A recent graduate of the coveted Doctor of Music degree from the Juilliard School in New York City, he has joined the Tianjin Juilliard School, Juilliard's first branch campus. As the youngest professor on the faculty himself, teaching solo, piano, and music history in the pre college and graduate divisions. Aside from teaching, he is also an active member of the Tianjin Julia Ensemble, the university's all faculty chamber group. So, everybody, without further ado, please join me in welcoming our guest today, Alvin Zhu. Hello. Hi. Hi, Alvin. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm so happy to be uh, part of this uh, wonderful series. I'm great. In great. From, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Right. How how is it? Uh, how is it over there? You you you're doing good during this quarantine? Uh, I'm I'm doing all right. Uh, spending spending uh, some some time with my parents. Uh, it's not as bad here. So um, uh, fingers crossed that it stays that way. But, That's. Uh, Great. My, my hope and prayers to everybody and uh, all throughout the world. Great. At least you've got a beautiful piano behind you uh, to keep you company, right? Yeah, I do. I'm very lucky. <laughs> That's great. All right. So our topic today, uh, well, let's just jump right in, right? So it's about learning a new piece, right? So mm -hmm. growing up, uh, I was wondering, uh, can you talk a little bit about your own experience with learning uh, new pieces? Have you always been uh, a quick learner? Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, I wouldn't say I'm particularly a quick learner, but I would say I just always had that sort of um, like the, the perseverance, almost to an obsessive degree, that if I set my mind to something, I wouldn't let it go. And I would just keep doing it until I was almost exhausted or just, just, just completely frazzled, right? And um, so I would say, especially for piano, that's, that would be the case. I wouldn't say I'm a very quick learner, but I, I definitely uh, would spend a lot of hours just just out of free will and interest and just just sort of motivation that I want to get something done. Gotcha. Is that why uh, you've you've sort of figured out the secrets to to learning new music? Because you you've always <laughs> tried to figure figure out you know a faster way to learn, maybe. <laughs> Probably. You, you know what? It's so funny. Um, uh, in the past, I've learned so many other instruments. I've played violin, viola, uh, drum set, and guitar. 
and those things, you know, it's, I think, um, ju just having piano as this sort of first instrument that started everything, it makes things so much easier. Right. right. But then when you go back to learning on the piano, it's such a complex instrument, you know, and the music, um, um, albeit it's, it's, I mean, it's endless and it's, it continues to grow. I think, uh, um, as, as a pianist, and I'm sure, you know, too, the bulk of what we do is alone. Right. 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 We need to figure things out by ourselves and really, uh, and really kind of get used to that sort of isolation, uh, so to speak. And in all that time, right. And all that effort, I think when we are sort of, you know, putting all that time, I think it's very natural for us to be like, okay, you know what, maybe let's try something new, something different and see if this works. Right. And, and by all, uh, by no means do I, uh, believe that my method is like the method, right. Cause I, I, I know everybody learns in a very unique way. Right. I mean, I mean, playing, making art, right. Making music itself is such a personal thing. Right. So, right. um, again these things may work for you it might not right i'm just i'm 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 here uh today wanting to just tell you what uh what i think works for me and, and that's that'll that'll start you know jogging some minds and stuff and that's great that's exactly the point of the piano star master classes you know we bring in all uh you know all kinds of experts uh, on on various subjects and then you know we I, I really, I truly believe in the wisdom of, you know, the, the mass, uh, well, uh, uh, of, you know, all kinds of perspectives rather than just uh, one. So I think that's great that, that you, 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 know, you are bringing your own, you know, from your own experience and your expertise to bring your, you know, method in. So um, I was wondering, um, have you seen uh, in your years of, you know, learning and, 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 and teaching, have you seen some common mistakes that people make uh, when they're learning a new piece, perhaps they're not um, just taking longer than they should. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm probably like uh, suspect number one. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would say one of the most dangerous things uh, anybody could do, really, is to just plunge into the music and to just read note by note by note by note, and. From and I, I, for some reason, I feel like that's what 80%, 90% of people does, oh, oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, and, and, and um, once we see, see, I think the biggest danger with that is we, we start right from the beginning prioritizing something that, you know, of course should be a priority, but it shouldn't be the first priority, right? Mm -hmm. So because we just look at notes, okay, well, definitely... I got to play the right notes, right? And then it's all about notes. It's all about notes, right? And so that's that's the one thing. Um, and I'll I'll get into some of the the tips that I that I suggest right. as we go on, right? Right, I, right. Yeah, that that's definitely one of the big ones to just to just sort of jump in without you know anything, right? Go in cold turkey. Right. Some yeah. That's that's uh, definitely one of the things that I've I've noticed uh, in my students or you know myself when I was younger too, where you I I would take the notes first and then disregard everything else and then slowly put everything else in and I've learned over the years that that's not optimal. So um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. double the work <laughs> right? because you exactly. have to, right. You learn all the notes, great, right? And then you have to go back and then like redo everything. <laughs> exactly. You play it the way you want, it, right? And so it's yeah, why? <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure our audience is is dying to know right now. Um, what can they do? What can they do? What are the three steps, right? As as okay. we put in the title, what are the three steps <laughs> that that one yeah, can yeah. take in learning the, a new piece? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Brian. Right. <laughs> so um, the three things that I've sort of um, uh, tried to find catchy titles to. Um, so the f the first of the three is called explore, right? Um, and then the second one is divide and conquer, and then the third one uh, I say is re a reevaluation. Right. And so when I get into these three, so, so basically what do I mean by explore? Right. Um, I think we can kind of 
sort of guess what that kind of means, right? We, we, it's not just that we look into the music, right? But we, we treat the music as really a, a, a map, right? Uh, think of it, think of it this way. We, um, as interpreters, right? The first steps we do with any new music, we're kind of like, you know, the, the pioneers, uh, the expeditioners, you know, we're going, you know, to uncharted territory. And luckily we have a map. Right, which is the score, right? So at least we know, okay, well, this is, you know, the ballpark, right? This is like, like if I'm gonna explore this, this, this part, right? If I'm surveying the land, right? At least I have this handy dandy guide, right? <laughs> right. And what better, right? Than the map that the composer gave us, right? So the composer, you know, told us everything he or she, you know, could have done uh, given the notation, you know? And actually we, we can think of it this way. Um, interpretation starts where notation ends, right? So again, all the composers that we're so, so used to playing, right? And so used to hearing and studying, right? Within this system, that's how best they could express it, right? And of course, it's not a perfect system, right? And because it's not perfect, it leaves so much room for, um, for our interpretations and our spins and our opinions on it, right? So um, I would say, the explore part of it, right? Actually, it doesn't need the piano, right? And and uh, um, I saw that Nico was on a couple weeks ago. Yes, he was. Uh, how 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 important mental practice is, right? Right. And I definitely agree. You know, um, and and I would just like to add. I mean, when you learn a piece, I mean, ment like that sort of mental stage, that mental uh, preparation and dimension, is is very very important as well right because uh in this sort of like um phase uh so to speak i get to really look into many many different dimensions of the piece right let's say um i wanted to you know look at the history of it, right um the, the structure of it the composer right um when did they write this the period right all of these things coincide with what with with how how much we know and how well we can prepare before uh, we even look at the first note right because i mean like there there are things that we can learn just from history itself that will help us when we interpret right i, I mean uh just a very small example um there are so many different dances in three right mm -hmm. mazurka uh, polonaise uh waltz right uh, saraban countless right but then, I mean, if I was playing a Saraband and I was playing a waltz, you know, there's completely different styles without me even looking at the notes, right? So there are things that we, we would know if we did, you know, some research or if we, if we explored some of that, right? And then the other thing is, now exploring also means that, that through this map, we get to choose the right or the most efficient route, right, to go through this let's say forest or this land, right? And what I mean by that is um, we get to, you know, decide what happens. We, we get to plan, right? Let's say this phrase, I want to do it this way, right? And then, okay, next phrase. You know, I can look at it measure by measure, phrase by phrase, section by section, passage by se uh, uh, passage by passage, right? And so that really sort of, it allows you so much time to really get to know the piece before you really get to know the piece, right? So it gives you a, sort of like a synopsis. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say the purpose of the explore phase is. Gotcha. So you yeah. would, sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just to get as much info and to get as much artillery and ammo uh, ready, for the, uh, ready for the hunt or the surveying, right? Uh, so that you know what to do, or at least you have an idea of what to do. Gotcha, gotcha. So you would actually recommend doing this, I guess, the survey of the music before you even start uh, playing the first note. Is that what you're saying? Gotcha. Definitely, yes. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Definitely. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely, I, I, I've always had to spend a lot of time telling my students uh, after they've learned the song. You know the piece that that you know. Look at the big picture. What what exactly. you, you're only exactly. thinking a note at a time, and I I feel like 
doing what exactly exploring like you said would really really help uh, um, mm -hmm. doing it before I think that that's actually a, a very uh, a new new concept uh, that I've heard mm -hmm. and I, I I, oh, okay. I, I'll definitely try try that with my students as well. <laughs> so why yeah, don't you go I'll, on to the I'll, yeah? Definitely. Why don't you go on to the second uh, step? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then the second phase I coin as divide and conquer, right? And the reason why I chose the, uh, chose this instead of just like conquer or to just like dive in is because um, because of that danger that I addressed earlier, right? When you sort of bite off more than you can chew, then it then it's very easy for you to be overwhelmed and maybe deterred and maybe, you know, eventually give up on the piece, right? And none of us would like that, right? Um, no matter how challenging a piece is, you know, uh, we can always learn something from it, right? And then to give up is always a very heartbreaking thing to do, right? So I would say uh, when I say divide and conquer, it really is to take the piece into digestible pieces, right? Um, and instead of let's say, okay, well today I have to do like, like, like the whole thing, right? Um, to instead to focus on smaller fragments, right? Measure to measure, phrase to phrase, section to section, passage to passage, right? You can do it that way much, much more effectively, right? Um, and then the other, the other thing I've realized, and this may just be me. But um, my mind is certainly not a computer. And I can't perform so many different actions. And I can't multitask um, as well um, as, well as um, like any old computer, right? And that, that includes processing information, right? I mean, when you look at it, uh, not just playing piano, but any, any instrument, right? Anything we, uh, actually, anything that involves, you know, coordination and motor skills, right? Those are completely, um, like, like completely complex uh, sort of actions, you know. And to couple that with dynamics, with character, with rhythm, with with balance, with sound and um, uh, articulation, everything, right? And then and then movement, posture. Oh my gosh, it's just way too much to think of all at once, right? And you know, my old method would was just to do, okay, well, you know, I'm like, I'm going to think about all those in due time, right? I'm still going to learn it. Right? But then, yeah, I, I always felt that that was just counterintuitive and counterproductive most of the time. Right? And so what I like to say is um, uh, like essentially divide and conquer means setting goals, right? Every day you could have a tiny goal, right? Like for example, if you only had 20 minutes to practice today, right? Or if you only had like, um, um, if you only had 20 or 30 minutes to practice today, right? Would it be wise to just run the piece, right? Let's say the piece is 15 minutes long, right? And let's say as a pianist, right? You have like more than just one piece, right? You can't just be expected to be a one piece player all, all your life, right? So let's say you just ran that piece and it took up half of your like a lot of practice time, right? Again, you probably wouldn't learn too much from that one run through, right? And equally, if you're learning a new piece, right? Like half an hour may seem, oh, okay. Yeah, I have enough time. Oh, when you're learning a new piece, half an hour flies, right? It'll be over before you even know, it, right? And so it's really, really important to just set manageable goals, right? And for me, I used to do, um, I, I, found, I found maybe a little bit later on that like, I'm much more comfortable, or no, no, I'm, I'm much more satisfied actually um, uh, having a comfortable amount of time to do a smaller project than an uncomfortable amount of time to do a bigger project, right? Because, you know, and, and, and that kind of just, you know, it gets into the habit of saying, like, um, I'd rather get one phrase very, very good as part of this day's goal than to have, you know, a, like, like a whole section kind of mediocre, right? And when you end a day with a mediocre passage, the next day you're like, ah, okay, well, now I got to do this again. Did I retain any of it? Blah, blah, blah. Right. And so it's another, you know, and then it just, uh, like, uh, it just mounts and mounts and mounts. Right. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think divide and conquer, like in a nutshell, it just means set 
easier or, or, or uh, um, I wouldn't say easier, but set manageable goals, right? That within 20 to 30 minutes, right? You can get something done, right? Gotcha. And, and by yeah. a, by uncomfortable amount of time, you mean like you don't want people to, sp- you know, spend too much time on, on too, too much stuff. Is that right? Like you, you don't want people to, to, um, to go through the whole piece, you know, maybe spend, spend a lot of time and, and really getting nothing done. Is that exactly? Is that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Gotcha. And yeah, would you yeah. recommend that teachers, uh, when they, um, I guess for for our younger teachers out there, um, that they spend, you know, uh, uh, more time on smaller passages on their in their lessons with their students? Would you suggest that they do that as well, or would you suggest the teachers, you know, go through the whole piece in in a lesson? Oh, you know, yeah, you know what. Um, and this is actually, I think this is very biased because this is how I teach. But um, I'm much more of a sort of like in the zone type of uh, teacher in which I'd rather focus on much smaller material, but have them really understand what the language is, um, what, they're, what they're striving for, what, what, they, what they could do, what they probably shouldn't do, like things like that, right? Rather than hearing the whole piece, right? And And... Um, I think it I think it helps in a lot of ways because one, it shows the students, oftentimes it shows the students just how specific and how much higher the standard really is when you only focus on like a tiny segment of the piece, right? And it also, you know, it allows you to, um, it allows you much more time to, uh, 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 you as the teacher, right? To, to sort of reimagine how you, uh, like approach this piece, right? Because because you're spending a little bit more time, you can actually bounce off ideas uh, from from one another, right? And then um, in the end, the students, right? The students will see what. Okay, well, um, not only that. Okay, well, in this short amount of time, like there's so many things that I can you know think about. But then it paves the way for you know. Okay, well then the next lesson, right? Or the next few lessons. This is the standard that I need to think about by myself when I do practice, right? This is what I have to think about, you know? Cause, cause oftentimes, I mean, when we hear from beginning to the end, right? As a teacher, um, there's a lot of things that we, that, that, that just because we need to let them play it through, we sacrifice a lot of things, right? And in the long run, you know, after five, 10, 15 lessons, maybe on the, on the same piece, which is not really recommended, right? But if, if it goes up until that point, right, then it's kind of like, okay, well, uh, today I'm not going to let this slide. You know, and then it's, you know, then it becomes a little bit inconsistent, in my opinion, right? So, so I'd much rather, you know, in, uh, let's say, in a one-hour lesson, right? I would probably, you know, um, I, would, I would let them play it through once, right, just so that they have the performance sort of uh, um, um, aspect of the lesson, you know, and then really sort of just go uh, increment by increment, phrase by phrase, you know, until I can either see that they, they sort of understand what I'm trying to get them to do, right? Or that, you know, we have, um, you know, we have like an artistic exchange and we go back and forth, you know, and I think that's much more productive than, than, than saying like, okay, well, okay, you rushed here and then, okay, uh, here, here you need, you know, uh, you need more, more pedal of blah. You know, that, that could be a little bit, you know, superficial sometimes. Right. That I uh, come too, too productive. 100% agree with that. Uh, that's also my style of teaching as well. I just, sometimes I would spend a long time on just getting a, a, a tiny section right. Because uh, yeah. I also feel like that's more important than just getting Definitely. the whole piece, you know, uh, mm. mediocre. So. So, um, so after that, after divide and conquer, you have re-evaluation. Uh, can you yeah. elaborate on that? Okay. Yeah. Th- this is a little bit hard to explain. Um, well, well, actually, it's not really. Uh, re- so, so reevaluation is basically um, what you did versus what you want. Right. It's a reflection of of what happened here. Right. Now, now we had a planning stage. Right. The explore. Right. In which we mapped out what we wanted to do, and then divide and conquer is kind of like the stage where we put that to action. 
right? Now, now it could be fast or it could be slow. But, uh, um, um, like, like it depends on on the comfort and and the skill of of the player, right? And then the last pillar, right? The last stage, uh, reevaluate is kind of just being your own critic, right? And that kind of just means like, um, like, did it work, right? Like, <laughs> like, did did what I do match up to what I want, right? And then, uh, uh, you know, um, I mean, in life, right? We're always confronted with the the things that we do versus the things that we want to do, or the things that we um, that we anticipated would happen, right? And I think it's a very important thing to 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 sort of to to put our minds around, you know, because um, let's face it, not everything that we plan in the beginning will be the plan that we stick to, right? And oftentimes, the the first plan that we make, it's a rough draft, right? It's a rough draft to say the least. And then after you test it out, right, and after you sort of reflect and see, okay, does this actually work? Do I even like it, right? Then like the reevaluation phase is you being at your harshest right you have to you know shine the mirror right in your face and 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 you have to you know face the fact okay is this what i want you know and if it's not right then we have the beautiful moment in which we go back to the drawing board we think we readjust you know and 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 sort of you know make a new thing and then we test it out and then we see if it's to our liking or not right so i think it's it's um, in a nutshell, are we happy with our choices and are we satisfied? Right? Gotcha, gotcha. And for for on that point, um, I find some of uh, some students, some especially young, you know, beginner to intermediate pianists, they have a hard time uh, listening, you know, knowing exactly what they want and and. You know, they in a nutshell, they don't know how they sound. They don't they don't know what they want, and they don't know that they played, uh, you know, how they played. Mm-hmm. How would you? What suggestions would you give them to improve? I guess their yeah, ability yeah. to evaluate themselves, the abil- their ability to listen, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. I mean, um, <laughs> we've all been there, right? And I, I certainly remember the times where I'm like, wait. Like, I thought I sounded pretty good. Like, well, what's my teacher talking about? Right? Like, 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 um, definitely so, been there, think, done that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. See, I think it's very healthy to, 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 you know, to start off very, um, very innocent, let's say maybe like, uh, um, uh, naive. Right. And then, yeah, as, as you start, you know, as you start, um, maturing, right. As you, as you start, you know, amassing more knowledge and more influence. Right then, you you have an easier time to criticize. Right now, I think um, like another word for criticizing ourselves, and actually, what 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 reevaluation will eventually do for us as pianists and as artists is that is what will make our taste. Right now, everybody has taste, right? Or 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 um, everybody has a certain you know extent to taste. Right now, some people may say, okay, well that guy has absolutely no taste <laughs> okay well well that may be your opinion of that guy's that guy's lack of taste right but but to that person no those are his preferences that's his taste right and then a, a lot of how we reflect and a lot of how we look at our own playing will reflect and will build up our own tastes right so what better way to you know uh to 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 sort of bolster and enhance our own tastes um, by really just learning more, right? Listening to a lot of recordings, you know, uh, reading about the composers, reading about the piano, reading about, you know, things that happen in the art world, right? Be inspired by, 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 by everything, right? And it doesn't have to be the piano. You know, I mean, art is all c- like interwoven, interconnected, right? So I, always, I often tell my students, especially if they're playing, let's say like, like a concert paraphrase of something, right? Um, if, if you're gonna play Liszt Rigoletto, right? Well, you better know what Rigoletto is, right? and you better go at least like know what 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 Verdi's language is, you know, before you even attempt to do that here, right? 
or, or, or watch some ballets or, or, or operas or, you know, everything, you know, and then that, that will, you know, um, like, like little by little, it'll help us kind of um, piece together our likes and our dislikes, right? Um, whether it's, whether you're aware or not, right? There will be times where it's like, okay, well, in the beginning, it could be just like, oh, okay, well, um, both are fine, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent, right? But then as, you know, as uh, the more you do it, right, the more you'll find yourself leaning, right? And leaning is a good first stage, right? When you lean in one direction, that means, ah, okay, I'm, I'm more, you know, engaged with this. And then naturally, you'll probably go seek out things that are related to this, you know, and then you can start building your branch and your tree and stuff like that, right? So I would say, a great way to really be honest with yourself right, is you need to be able to listen to a lot of people. Right? You, have to be, uh, uh, you have to be willing to listen uh, before you can speak, right? Uh, uh, just um, like figuratively speaking, right? To, to, to play with your own voice, right? And, and in the end of the day, I mean, like um, I said earlier, music is a complete, like a super uh, immensely personal thing, right? And I mean, you can, you can, you can spend your life uh, looking at others, right? And you can spend your life striving to be like somebody else. And at the end of the day, I mean, the most powerful thing is to be yourself right? and to find yourself, to find your voice, right? That's, that's why we have like billions of, of, of pianists, right? It's not that they all want to play like one person, right? But it's that, that we want to, in, in in this one act that that connects us all, we're trying to find our own sort of voice, right? We, we, and we don't want to be, you know, alone, right? We want to be together, but then very individual, right? So I think the more you listen, right, the more you learn, and the more you sort of um, uh, do do things like that, the 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 more honest you will be with with how you approach the piano, how you approach learning, practicing. Uh, uh, listening and and really appreciating music, you know. I think that's what's uh, the core the core objective of reevaluation. Right? It's not just so that okay, well, great, he can play the Berg Sonata like like in a week. Great, <laughs> right? Right. I I think it's much more meaningful than that, right? Because when you can honestly look at yourself and strive for even better while appreciating everything around you. I think that's what makes uh, a genuine and, and influential artist. That's fascinating. I think, and I think that's very, very important. Uh, that, that was a very important point that you made um, about, you know, be listening more and, and being yourself. Um, time flies really fast. It's, it's already over our uh, 30 minute limit, oh. but, uh, and, and, uh, uh, we have our, our, our next performer in the room, but before that, I just want to address, uh, one of our audience's question cause I, I see it. Mm -hmm. So maybe you, if you could spend just one minute, I know we're already over time, sure. but, um, uh, he, Michelle asked anything you like parents of piano students to know. So I guess, you know, just very quickly, what can, I guess, parents of piano students, what can they uh, do to help their kids, uh, you know, achieve the same goals, I guess? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a, that's, that's a very, very good question, you know, and it's a very, you know, hot button topic, you know, especially in China. Um, but I want to say that I've been extremely lucky you know, to have my parents be, you know, the, the guiding forces, you know, and the rocks, right, um, in my life. Um, and because I come from a musical family, you know, that's, uh, besides being my, like, just, uh, um, just, just impenetrable support system, they, you know, have facilitated so much of my own musical growth, right, taking me to concerts, lessons, you know, uh, finding opportunities for me to perform. You know, I mean, those those are all just in, insanely uh, important for nurturing students, right? Now, uh, but then, but then, see, there's a there's a fine line, right? Because I've also seen where parents, you know, are 
you know, completely like overboard, mm -hmm. you know, in which um, they sort of make all the judgments for the for the students, right? Now, of course, as as a kid, right? As a kid, um, you don't really have the capacity to make informed decisions yet, right? So that's where the 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 parents can always support, right? But then I've I've seen instances where, for example, um, because of how competitive this this field is, you know, the parents sort of you know thrust the kids um, into things that that may not be the best exposure for the kids, you know? And I would just say like, it's definitely difficult, but being the support, right? Being the, the best cheerleaders, you know, be, being, being, being the people that, that will, you know, um, you know, lay everything uh, on the line uh, to, you know, get them to the concert venue or, 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 or or all these things, those are the parents that are like, like, like God sent. I mean, amazing, right? Um, but definitely also, see, the parents also need to remember that once the students have a teacher, right, then they're, they're part of that teacher's sort of wing, right? And sometimes I've seen also that parents like to go against the, the teacher's wishes. And then, you know, there's this whole fiasco and stuff like that, right? So definitely, it's a it's a very fine line to 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 tread, right? But always just have faith in your child, right? Have faith in 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 the ambitions and the motivations that come from him, him or her, right? Rather than your own um, as a parent, your own ambitions and your own dreams, right? I think that's the most important thing, and um, whether or not the kid becomes a pianist. Or like a violin, or 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 a professional musician, right? The things that they went through, right? With with the with the overwhelming support from the parents. I mean, the the kids are always they they've been changed from the get go, right? And they'll never forget how much music will never leave their lives. You know, I mean, I've I've um, I've had a lot of a lot of friends come up to me before saying like, man. Um, you know, I, I studied an instrument when I was in, you know, middle school and high school, but then I quit, you know, and then now, now I'm, I'm like 30, uh, uh, I'm like 30 something years old. And then like, now I just regret, right? Cause, cause now when I'm trying to learn, it's, it's completely different. I used to play it so, you know, and I think that's the, that, that's a big thing, you know, uh, like nobody ever wants to regret, you know, and it really, it really takes a very strong, but a really flexible and a really faithful parent or a set of parents to really, you know, um, show that music is not something that, you know, is, you know, like 100 percent made in in like a fiery goblet. Right. And, and it's not just work and work, 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 work. And you can get that. Right? Music is something that is, you know, it it depends on how how well or how fast or how slow the individual can bloom, right? And some people, some people don't bloom until they're a little bit older. Some people bloom very young, right? But then for them, it's about maintaining it rather than uh, chasing it, right? So yeah, it's, it's, a de it's definitely a hard line to, to, to tread, but um, to be supporting, uh, to be understanding, to be flexible and to really just ha have faith. You know, because some sometimes we we don't really see the end result because we're not we're 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 kind of ants, right? And we're not seeing it from 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 the sky. So that's gotcha. my take on it. Thank you so much for for spending so much time and then explaining oh. <laughs> this and, and, and going into so much detail. My pleasure. Right. My pleasure. And and of course, uh, thank you for our audience uh, who 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 asked this question. Feel free to ask more questions as we go on to the the masterclass portion.